A strong cyclone is on the cards for Mauritius and Reunion over the next few days on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 13th. So around the world we've got a new tropical storm, the first one to form during this calendar year and it's 5S and we fully expect it will get named by the by Matteo France shortly after this bulletin. The next name on the naming list is Bilal. In the Atlantic it's 139 days until hurricane season and there's a big uh, low pressure system moving across the United States today which is causing a lot of uh, blizzard weather. Further east over the Atlantic Ocean, there's a few other disturbances out there as well, from the low latitudes up through the subtropics there. In the eastern Pacific, one or two fronts moving along the uh, higher latitudes there, but in general it's a quiet basin with 122 days until hurricane season begins again. You just about see California there as well at the top with quite a lot of cloud cover today as well. The Western Pacific is very quiet apart from the extreme southern extremities there near the equator where we have the doldrums and a lot of convective activity which is uh, not very well organized obviously but very high in number. Same too for the North Indian Ocean. Now look at this, the Australian region, four areas of interest now, an 80% chance near the cutoff point with the Southwest Indian Ocean, 40% off the western coast of the top end, 30% in the Gulf of Carpentaria, and 20% in the Coral Sea. Could all three of them form? It's doubtful. And Tropical Storm 5S here, which we're giving 40 mile per hour winds now um, and is looking better on satellite imagery today, with pressure likely falling as well, it's set to be a big cyclone in the next few days. So here's a close up of it. It is 154 kilometers from Tromelin, which is a small island part of Mauritius, 523 from Antalaha, Madagascar, 646 from Mauritius, 693 from Reunion, and 725 from Toa Masina in Madagascar as well. It's likely to rapidly intensify in the next 48 hours and probably reach Category 2 status in that time before reaching what the JTWC forecast as a high-end Category 3 peak before gradually weakening and it will be near its strongest as it passes through those islands. Here it is on satellite imagery right now and as you can see it's still looking rather primitive but it's still you can get the idea that it's going to be a significant storm down the line. Look further east and you can see that other area of interest much further towards the Australian region but you can capture it on this uh, Mateo sat satellite as well so we thought we'd show you that. But look at the uh, infrared right now and uh, you can see lots of cloud coverage there and convection blowing up around a central point. It's not an eye obviously but uh, one day it will Will be one day soon uh, but certainly a good start for this system it is intensifying decently and it's got a big bulk of convection surrounding it uh, so it's not particularly vulnerable either relatively small in stature as well uh, compared to what you would normally expect for a tropical cyclone that means that there is a decent shot of this rapidly intensifying and that's what uh, looks like is going to happen that's some microwave imagery there as well uh, not giving away very much so far. Here's the other area of interest towards the eastern part of the Indian Ocean, still in the southern sector, and you can see it's not getting itself together very quickly, and as that's what we expected, we were talking about that in our last update, uh, it will take a few days for this one to get going, uh, but chances are continuing to increase with all major models on board, it's just a question of which way will it steer, that seems to be a bit of a sticking point at the moment, whether it's southwest or southeast. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific still capping off at maximums around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, but in general those temperatures are pretty cool now. The Atlantic Ocean still looking at a few spots in the Caribbean Sea, but obviously we're not expecting anything to form at this time of year. In the western Pacific, temperatures still receding off the northern tip of the Philippine Islands down below 26 degrees Celsius, you don't see that very often. And in the uh, Philippine Sea, still some decently warm temperatures there for quite a few areas. 
Bear Bengal is looking mild, 28 degrees in a few spots, much warmer off the western coast of India in the Arabian Sea around the Maldives, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean is running above average, particularly where this cyclone is right now. It's 30 to 32 degrees Celsius at the moment, and temperatures around Mauritius and La Reunion are still 28 to 29. In the northern parts of Australia, those temperatures are through the roof as well, 32 degrees plus in some parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria, as well as off the western tip uh, of Darwin and that kind of area, looking at very high temperatures there as well. South Pacific looking decent and a few spots above 30 degrees there as well in the lower latitudes, uh, 15 degrees south and northwards. Uh, near Fiji and Vanuatu, temperatures still looking good around 29 degrees. Well, you can see it's well above average in the southwest Indian Ocean, the areas that matter. Once the storm passes the Mascarene Islands, though, it will drop to below average. In the uh, Pacific, we're still looking at the El Nino effect, still uh, presiding at the moment with a decent hot pocket there. The Atlantic above average for what it's worth, and the South Pacific also generally above. Coral Sea, though, being the highlight. Oceanic heat content is still looking decent as well. The Coral Sea's got quite a bit of energy. It's well recovered after Jasper. And looking towards the rest of the South Pacific, it's looking good too, down to Fiji. In the North Pacific, it's really dying off in the Eastern Pacific now. The Western half, though, still looking okay for a few areas. And you can't rule out uh, strong storms even in January in the Western Pacific, as we saw on yesterday's on this day. But thankfully, nothing like that right now. So let's take a look at the GFS computer model which rapidly uh, launches this storm into category 2, 3 and maybe even category 4 status before reaching the islands and then crossing through and actually making a direct landfall on Mauritius there as a category 3 storm by the looks of things. This is still quite an uncertain forecast and it could vary wildly. This particular scenario has it moving much more slowly than we initially expected through the islands and then off towards the southeast almost storm as it does so actually. Looking at the south, uh, the further eastward system, you can see that next system eventually forming uh, takes a good couple of days before it gets there, around the 15th probably, when it starts to become a tropical cyclone, but looks like it's strengthening quite a bit near the end. The threat is decreasing to the Cocos Keeling Islands. It looks like it will stay a fair distance away, and we're now looking at maximum rainfall totals of 100 millimeters rather than minimums. In the Australian region then, we're looking at those potential three systems. Look all around the area there, off the western part of the top end. You can see a little system there, another one moving through the Gulf of uh, Carpentaria. And then a third system, which could actually result from the second one, into the Coral Sea. Watch again the Cape York Peninsula. First you'll see it the system along the southwestern part there, then a second one that briefly forms off the coast of eastern Australia, Queensland, and then it gets overtaken by that first system, I think, on that GFS forecast. It's a big royal mess, and it's going to take some time to figure it all out. Maybe all three of them will form, but it's unlikely. Looking at the rainfall expectations though, this is also becoming a significant challenge for the Mascarene Islands as well as still we're expecting a large amount in the northern part of Madagascar and those rainfall estimates have really gone through the roof southeast of Mauritius, thankfully not over land, but 67 inches of rainfall there, that's over 3000 millimetres. On Mauritius itself though, we're looking at 17 inches, that's over 400 millimetres, and on La Réunion it's nearly 300 millimetres. Over northern Madagascar, we're looking at over 550 millimetres at this time, that's for the next seven days. So along with those very strong winds, we could be looking at serious flooding issues. In the Australian region, we're also looking at this area closely too because we're still expecting very large amounts of rain in several areas again here. So first of all, we're looking at the uh, the uh, Cape York Peninsula there on the right-hand side, we're looking at very high amounts of rain in the pink, but further towards the west near the top end and the Bonaparte Gulf, you're looking at very high amounts of rainfall out to sea, thankfully, over 2,000 millimetres, uh, but uh, or 1,000 actually, I should say, uh, but looking inland, we're looking at over 500 millimetres. You got my maths wrong there, somewhere down the line. And on the Cape York Peninsula, we're looking at over 22 inches, and that could result. That's about uh, 550 millimetres once again, and 600 further south. Actually, Waper could be in there with a lot of rain. 
well into the longer range then and we're, this is what we're looking at right now we're expecting very high amounts of uh, I don't know what I was saying now, still on the rainfall. Uh, we're expecting the storm to move towards the southeast afterwards, uh, the 5S, and eventually the GFS now has it stalling and not moving very much at all in that whole five to 10 day period. That second system dies off relatively quickly too, and instead of them jumping down towards the extratropical zones, they actually stay alive for a little bit longer and just trawl around the area really. The Australian region looking at those systems again, the first one in the Coral Sea could make a run for New Caledonia with tropical storm force winds nearing hurricane status and what eventually happens with that system towards the west there it does skirt along the whole coast of Western Australia in the end towards Exmouth and Port Hedland so that's something to watch out for now a new signal on that GFS model but that is still over a week away so I wouldn't put much stock into that one yet it's still a very uncertain situation and likely to change as we've already seen scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts also available and they'll probably be decomposing by the time the Hone forms. In the silly range then we've got 5S which continues to stall there which is a complete 180 from what the models were saying last time out. Eventually it does go down there into the deep exotropical zone but not in a hurry. Behind that though maybe another storm or two in the very long range there but this is the silly range so towards day 16 there was briefly one or two systems that formed there, tiny ones actually, north of Mauritius. So who knows what might happen in that longer range but it does feel like this season is going to be back loaded doesn't it it's been a quiet start so far on this day it was january 13th 2016 when we had a surprise and one of my famous lines not an april fool's joke or indeed a january fool's joke but this subtropical storm alex which had just formed and was heading towards the azores we also had another anomaly hurricane pali which was in the central pacific category one we also had what was left of Cyclone Eula, which was dying off as it was approaching the North Island of New Zealand. Pictured of course, that is Hurricane Alex near its peak. Well back to today and the first name on the Atlantic Hurricane season this list this year isn't Alex, it's Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific it's Aletta and in the Central Pacific it is that dreaded Hone. We are code orange for Mauritius and Reunion right now for this cyclone, so we are on a fairly high alert. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Iwiniar. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Remal. You can track all of the current activity on our automated stream right now on the Force 13 YouTube channel. Uh, just go get the shortcut, youtube.com slash force 13 slash live. The Australian region, the next name is Kiralee. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, at the time of recording, it's Bilal, but I think it may have formed by then. And in the South Pacific, it's going to be Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.